you've probably heard a lot about resilience the last few years, and you think, okay, we've done that. We've taken care of it. Well, I'm trying to tell you, if what you've done is had a speaker in or a webinar or a series of webinars, you probably haven't. I hate to tell you. Most organizations have not taken care of the resilience required for their people to deal with the after effect of the pandemic. Where I'm standing, we had a major flooding incident just a few weeks ago. And if you look around, everything looks wonderful and fine. But around me, the trails here, a lot of them are washed out because they came rivers. And they were totally impassable. They're still impassable. There's a lot of work that's still to be done to get things back to normal. And that's the same for your people. As much as we don't like to admit it, the pandemic was pretty traumatic for a lot of people. Think of all the changes that they had to deal with. Being trapped at home, then working from home, then dealing with hybrid workplaces, dealing with homeschooling, dealing with all of these massive, massive changes, plus the terror of what the pandemic would do in those first few months. That was a traumatic experience, and most people have not dealt with that. Just because pandemic is over, we don't just go back to being normal. We still have to deal with the after effects, and we need to grow our resilience to help with that. So let's get clear what we're talking about when we're talking about resilience. From the original engineering, resilience comes from the term where you can distort a physical object and have it return to its original shape after the stress is removed. And we use it in a similar way uh, with people. It's about how you respond to stresses and and are able to sometimes go back, but usually it's not go back. What it is, is it's not to spring back, but to spring forward. Because when you've been under that stress, you never go back to where you were. It's about how do you move forward and be more responsive in the future. Now, what determines resilience? There's a lot of things. One of the biggest factors that determines resilience is what's called personal power which is your sense of control over yourself and what's happening around you. The more you feel control over yourself and your surroundings, the lower your stress levels, the higher your resilience. When the pandemic first hit, that personal power took a big hit because we didn't know what was happening. We were washing our groceries. We didn't dare touch things. We were isolated, didn't know what was safe. So personal power went way way down. Now, some of the other things that affect resilience are things such health in all ways, physical health, mental health, emotional health. The more you are in good shape, the more mindful you are, the more you're able to deal with and process your emotions, the higher your resilience. One of the biggest determinants, in fact, right now, the biggest determinant of resilience is sleep, getting a good night's sleep. How often do you sleep easily and peacefully through the night versus tossing and turning, worrying about things, having things run through your head, wake you up all the time? That's the biggest determination of resilience. How do you as a leader influence the resilience of your team in a lot of ways? What sort of support do you provide them? Do you create an avenue for them to be able to come to you, to talk about problems, to talk about challenges, talk about frustrations? When I've been in a leadership role, a lot of times people come to me venting about stuff that's going on. They go, no, 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 no. And I listen to them and I, I, so I ask them back questions. Okay, so you're saying this happened and this happened and this what would you like to need to do about it? And I go, well, blah, 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 and this happened. Blah, 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 blah. And I say, okay, so you're saying this and this and this happened. And what can I do to help you? And they, nine times out of ten, they'll say, well, nothing. I just needed to get it off 
my chest. It gets them out of the head so that it's not running around in here. You create a safe space that lets them come to you when they need to do that. Or you focus on work. We've got to move forward. We've been so far behind because of all these pressures. We've got to move forward and you drive pressures on them. The more you put that pressure on them and don't give them that space to breathe and help them when they are feeling that pressure, the more you're wearing down the resilience. The more you create that space, the more you give them the opportunity to come to you, to be able to vent, to be able to ask questions, to, to just help cope with those things that are not task related. Remember, as a leader, you got two functions. One is task focused, one is people focused. You got to address them both. If you're only task focused, you're going to wear down your people, especially right now. Another way that you can build resilience with your people, with all of your people, is providing resources. Are you providing ways that they can learn and develop mindfulness? Are you providing ways to encourage them to stay in shape, to get out, to get active, to join different things, to bring in classes? Are you providing them with resources that help them understand how they can cope with things? That's a huge determinant resilience. But if you're saying, well, like the old days, you know, there's work life, there's home life, deal with it, we're focused on work. You're just going to wear people down. And the reality, there is no work life and home life. We have one life and both impact the other. And as a leader, part of the job is dealing with that messy human stuff so that we can find a way through that to be effective at work. It's about leading people, managing things. Now, another big determinant of resilience is what you do. Do you model it by practicing the things that grow your resilience? Do you practice mindfulness? Do you develop it? Do you keep yourself in shape? Are you active outside of work? Do you have a social support system? All of these things build resilience. What's your personal power? Are you feeling the pressure? Are you feeling worn down? If you are feeling that way, you're going to convey it to your people. So the more you can build your resilience, the more resourceful you can be for your people, and the more you can model what you want. What I would like to know is how you build your resilience and how you build the resilience of your team. I mean, there's all sorts of ways that you can do it, but I would love to hear what you are doing to build the resilience of your team. Please take a moment and put it in the comments below. Now, from all of these things, what I'd like you to do, what would make the most impact for you, is if you can pick one or two things that would really make a difference for the team. Don't come up with a list of 10 or 12 because you're not going to do any of them. That's the reality of it. From all the things we've mentioned in this video, things you might see in the comments, what are one or two things that you could do to take an initiative to help your team? How can you create that safe space, that coaching space where you can have that conversations? How can you bring in resources for them, for exercise, for mindfulness? How can you give them resources to be able to, there's a lot of organizations that provide funds to let people you know, join gyms, to let people do some learning outside of work. That all builds resilience. How can you engage your people in helping to set the objectives that they have to meet so that they grow their personal power and they build their resilience instead of just dictating here are the deadlines, here's the deliverables. How can you engage them in helping you co-create that? All of these things and other things that I've mentioned, let's go through those and pick one or two that you can focus on for the next two weeks and you'll have a huge impact. Let me know what those one or two things are in the comments and then later on, let me know how you did. I'd love to hear how you and your team are growing your resilience.